your brother Alain Radine Kwan welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, or powered by the Pastor Alain Radine Kwan Center for Inspiration. This is a daily gem devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gem soon upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on when love turns elsewhere. Coming from 1 Kings chapter 11, 9 and 10. Just two verses. Uh, let's pray together. Father God, we bless your name, O oh God. Give you praise, give you glory, give you honor. Lord, thank you, thank you, and thank you. It's um, another fine weekend that we are enjoying, and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. As we go on to share this morning, O oh God, speak to your people directly. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. <clears throat> All right. So the Lord got angry. And got angry because his heart turned from following the God of Israel. It's not just his mind. The Bible says his heart also turned from following the God of Israel. It was not just his attention, not just his focus. All of those things have turned. And now uh, he, he called it heart here. And that brings me into something else. Um, it's more encompassing than just his mind. It's more encompassing than just his thoughts. When he says his heart, I like to look at it as the object of his love. Where he poured his affection had now turned, you know, into other other places. Now, in this case, now you were talking about God, and the Bible says God was not happy. God was angry. And I believe that many of us can relate with that. Actually, somebody loves us or somebody uh, proclaims love for us and somebody has demonstrated love for us in the past. Uh, this person, you know, pours his love upon me, pours her hearts, you know, unto me, or her, her love, her affection, you know, <clears throat> the depths of her affection, his affection has been poured upon me, all of a sudden, it shifts elsewhere. Hallelujah. And at times, uh, it may not shift to any person in particular. It may shift to his possessions. It may shift to his position. It may shift to his ambition. It may shift to his acquisitions. It may shift to his associations. Yeah, there are so many directions that these things may shift onto. A shift is a shift. And when that love has turned in another direction, nobody likes it. Even God, the Bible says that God became angry with Solomon. Now, the, the person you are relating with, your, your spouse, for example, or some other close friend, for example, uh, for example or um, some associates, for example, or, you know, when your love is, you know, turns to another direction, believe me, nobody enjoys it. Nobody likes it. The Bible says even God was angry. So people do get angry. If you never, um, from the beginning... Um, showed any affection towards these people in the first instance. That's no quarrel. You never showed any affection. But when you show affection, when you pour affection, and then it turns to another direction, it can be very, very hurtful. And people do get angry, you know, because of that. Uh, just like God did get angry. I remember a particular a couple as I, as I, as I, as I talk. Um, and the, the lady wasn't feeling that uh, maybe her husband was cheating or anything like that. But his attention, his heart, went on to some associates of his. And every evening, we'll sit with these people and they will be on for four, five hours. Right into, uh, the, you know, very, very late in the night and all that. And she was, she was really, really angry. And I can understand it because the Bible says even God got angry because the heart of Solomon, the affection of Solomon, um, yeah, it turned elsewhere. So also, it happens to us in life. And I want to, um, you know, say this to people who may be going through this at this point in time. I identify with you. I know it can be very, very painful um, when it seems as if that attention has gone elsewhere. <clears throat> Uh, the Lord strengthen you at this time, but then uh, the people who also have shifted attention, maybe you want to appraise things and find out whether this thing to whom or to which you have shifted attention is worth the while. Whether God is in it, whether it is lasting, whether it is worth um, sacrificing this for, 
you know, and all that, you need to really appraise things and then rearrange yourself according to the result of your appraisal. May God help us all in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says now, is that has turned from the Lord God of Israel who appeared to him twice. Now this, the way, the emphasis on who appeared to him twice, it seems to me that what they are trying to say that this appearing to somebody is a big deal. That's the way he said, who appeared to him twice. It's as if this thing, does, it was not commonplace. It doesn't happen to just anybody. And that this, I mean, divine appearance to us carries along with it some responsibility. Because that's the way it's put here. It says, the God of Israel who appeared to him twice. Not even appeared to him once, twice. That implies that you've got to be responsible. That um, divine visitation um, should carry with it, with it some responsibility from our part. The fact that God has appeared to you twice, it implies that certain things expected of you. Yeah, some responsibility must go with it. That's why it is emphasizing God who appeared to him twice. And so, it is not a frivolous thing. It is not a light thing. It is not uh, one of those things when God appears to you or when God sends an angel to you know, come and deliver some message to you. It's not one of those things. It's not something to be taken lightly. Is something that you should never forget and that should go with some sense of responsibility. It doesn't appear to just anybody. He hasn't appeared to my neighbor and this other neighbor at all in all their lives. He has appeared to me twice. That means something. I must be responsible. That sense of responsibility must go along with That's what I get from here for the Lord who appeared to him twice. That's it. And then he goes on to say, and who commanded him concerning this thing, that you should not go after other gods. In other words, God appeared to you and then he had a double warning. That when you get a double warning, it means a lot. That when God is uh, underpinning, you know, some a warning with it another one. It means that it's very, very important and you should, uh, you should uh, remember that. And, uh, and anyway, let us go on to the next thing. But he did not keep what the Lord has commanded. That, that's why I was going. So when God commands such things or says such things, you now have a responsibility to keep those things. To keep means that to guard it from, from, from going away, to ensure that you don't lose it. In actual fact, the word keep here is similar to that um, um, picture that you find in terms of a goalkeeper keeping a goalpost. That's, that's the sense of the keep here. Yeah, he's not guarding it. He's not trying to present to prevent anything from um, going past it. He's not, you know, walking. Yeah, God expects us to do something to keep his, his words. <clears throat> now, this is important for us even at this time. When you keep the word of God, Jesus described it as you having it. Hallelujah. Have it. When you keep it and keep it and you keep it securely in the sense of keeping such that nothing will take it away and nothing will make you lose it or nothing will um, drive past it or whatever. When you have that sense, it will become something you are not just keeping, you actually have. You now possess it. That's the language that Jesus says that to whom that hath shall more be given. Talking about obeying instructions. So when you keep God's word like that, you now have it. It becomes part and parcel of you. It becomes, yeah, just because comes part of you you are just mixed together with the word of god hallelujah so it begins with keeping <clears throat> keeping god watching over it ensuring that nothing rocks it nothing shakes it nothing affects it in any way you are keeping it watching over it um like like a goalkeeper <laughs> praise the lord that's the sense of that keep there hallelujah and when you have done this, the Lord is only going to bless you at the end of the day. That is what Solomon did not do. And that is what led to God becoming angry with him. That is what led to his heart, you know, his emotions, his uh, affection, you know, going elsewhere. And when his affection, when his love turned away from God to some other thing, it caused trouble. You remember, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Bible says some things. Um, I don't know whether we still have time in the... In the um, in John, hallelujah, let's just see whether I can do another quick minute or so. In First John chapter, chapter 2, it says, Love not the world, nor the things in the world. If anybody loves the Lord, love, well, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. Yeah. So once your love is turned elsewhere, um, it is not something that uh, God is going to enjoy. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> you are going to shoot yourself in the foot 
Uh, God help us. Let us know. Let us ensure that we don't go that direction. Let me say happy, happy weekend to all of us. Thank you.